Right, welcome to the Sports Show. Mike Max, Patrick Royce, Lavelle E. Neal, and the one and only Sid Hartman. A lot to talk about today. Turned into a busy uh, sports news week for a lot of different reasons. Sid, let's start where we started last week with the Minnesota <laughs> Twins. And, you know, we saw Seattle, and they went in there, and you, you became very optimistic, and then all of a sudden they went back to being the Twins. Well, I can't see how they can undo this. They got all that money wrapped up in those three pitchers. Hughes couldn't get me out the way he's pitching right now. Yeah, they tried to put him in the bullpen. They couldn't keep him there because they needed him no, to start. No, Rasko, up and down. They're 4 and 16, no three pitchers. We just checked it today. And then Santana, he's home run conscious. <laughs> he gives up nothing, nothing but home runs. That's the case on Saturday. Okay, got all let, let me ask money. the bigger question. Uh, Patrick, I'll start with you and Lavelle. Of those three pitchers, the bigger question to me is, do you think they really, really care? Uh, I think they care on the days they're pitching, but uh, whether, whether, you know, I, I don't think it ruins Ricky Nolasco's life for four days if he has a bad start, or Santana, I think, just figures, okay. You look at Santana, he's been very streaky, so I'm not surprised that he threw up a clunker yesterday, but he, he hadn't been terrible. But uh, And he was great I, for a couple innings yesterday. I, was. Yeah, I, I don't know that what what the definition of caring is, what do you do for the four days between your starts? And I, I, I don't have any idea. The legend is in Alaska works pretty hard, but it's all individual. He's not real worried about where they are in the standings, I don't think. So The well, point uh, is, how... I'm going to ask you this question. How but don't do you, answer it. How do you get out of this deal? You got three pitchers getting close to $100 million or close to it. You don't. You're, you're asking the right question. How do you get out of it? Yeah. So, well, yeah, I don't know if you can because in order to get out of it, you have to move these guys and send, send them to another team. And who's going to want that salary? Now, San Diego figured out a way to trade James Shields on Saturday to the White Sox. They gave up some money. Right, right. But Shields wasn't doing that bad. It means he already has 4.2, which isn't bad, and they ate part of the contract. The Twins have, We're going to take do that. them. But I don't see any team right now would look at Hughes, Santana, or Nolasco and say, this guy will improve my rotation. So I think they you can they, move Santana if you pay half the money. Maybe. maybe. I, I don't think you can move the other two guys. Not, not the way he pitched yesterday, though. No. Who's going to take Hughes? Nobody's going to He's in the bullpen now. He might be done. Yeah, but at least they only owe him 40 Nobody's going to take this. the other two. <laughs> so you're stuck. Well, you're right. They're stuck until Maurer's contract expires. Well, but it, uh, they choose not to spend money. Said they, it's not that they can't. They choose not to. Remember that. Well, they, but they did spend money on Alaska, Santana, and Hughes, and you know they've spent 170 million bucks. You know, I, I got to say, and, and it reaffirms not that this is a, a new baseball theory, but. If your pitcher doesn't come from your organization, because nobody lets go of the good ones, you know. Mm -hmm. Phil Hughes, if the Yankees want him, he ain't going anywhere. And, and that's why I was just talking to Darren Johnson, the scouting director, last night about the draft, which is uh, starts on Thursday. You know, and you always are going to want to find big arms. You're always going to want to get pitching because you see what happens when you go out and try to sign yeah, you, sign those mid-level starting, yeah, you know, starting pitching guys. I, Sid's not as young as he used to, as, and neither am I. Do you think we're, either of us is going to be alive when one of those big arms actually comes here and <laughs> does something? When's the last time they developed a pitcher you like as a starter? When's you, the last time? Do you count Johan Santana? No. Uh, Radke's oh. the closest thing. Yeah. You're, right? you're talking 20 years? And we're talking about a 500 pitcher. 20 years. Yeah. Well, yeah. he was, you know. He, he thought least, Gibson was on that path, but uh, he's he been least, injured and he's still. Ian Lee's had some testosterone. He sure did. Yeah. And, and he needed him around, and he was good and all that stuff. But why do you think that is, Patrick? Do you no think idea. it's because of the drafting, or do you think it's just such an inexact science that finding the right pitcher and mentality is luck? When they fire everybody, that includes the scouting department, I believe. They, they don't have any pitchers in the farm system either. They got one kid that was burning up Channel 2, a relief pitcher, who's got a ton of strikeouts. But that's not He's a side He's not ready Gilbert. for here. Yeah. But forget about the pitcher. Do they have a good shortstop? A good fielding shortstop? A catcher. They got a second baseman that can't buy a hit. And they got an outfield. When Buxton's not out there, 
They can field. And, and catcher is a, a complete is disaster. A disaster. I'm a, if I'm a Twins fan, I'm, I actually want to watch uh, Buxton and Kepler play right now. I mean, that would be the, the main reason for going to the ballpark to see how those guys develop. You know, Kepler looks like he can score up a ball pretty pretty good, so I want to see more of him. And he's Here, got an arm. Here's the big question. Does the, the ball ads blow it up or not? Do they finally say, you can, this is, this is, Sid, in my opinion, the biggest disaster in the history of the franchise. I think this is the biggest crisis. You know, there were rumors in the 70s they were going to logo to Seattle in the 80s. I think this is the biggest crisis in the history of the well, franchise. And they got no future. Well, this. that's why you got to... You got to throw, you got to say, Terry, thanks for your help. But uh, I think you should go be a special assistant to Andy. It's over. They're going to have to blow it up. Or they're going to have under 10,000 season tickets well, next year. They got think, 13 and a half now. Oh, well, boy, Jim, those crowds. Is, I mean, June, you know, Memorial Day after is when it starts. Yeah, just, but they're right. not bad. They're still 25. They're, they're, they're 26. Now, right? They're 26 on Saturday. Yeah, so, so maybe 20. Well, maybe I was there at the wrong part of the game then. Now, was, here's where it's going to come in August when they have to mail out season ticket renewals. That's when they're gonna, the cold water is going to be splashed in their face about the, how people feel about this organization. An official announcement. Moeller the jeweler is on his own. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't going to be no group season ticket deal part, The partner <laughs> is over. He's lost his last Texas, partner. <laughs> Texas got a 35-year-old general manager has done a pretty good job. Tampa until this year, they ha had an article in their program, their per victories, cost per victory yeah. is the lowest of any in the league. Epstein in they're, Chicago. They're unwatchable, though, Sid. Huh? Tampa's unwatchable. Yeah, they Tampa got team. nobody. And it's oh. embarrassing that the Twins are losing to Tampa. So. Uh, I asked Paul Mulder this yesterday, would you take any of these kids and, and take the opposite philosophy, reverse it? In other words, you're always talking to the Twins about you got to use the whole field, use the whole field. Then you watch Tampa, and they're just going to swing and swing, and somebody's going to hit a home run, they hope. Would you, would you take a Dozier or a Plouffe and just say, okay, forget about using the whole field. Well, just try to hit 30 home runs. Plouffe can do it, yep, so Plouf I wouldn't tell him that. Well, Dozier, Dozier uh, did it last year, and if something's in his head about the, how he's, he's being pitched differently this year. He hasn't made it. He hasn't made the adjustment yet. Yeah, you know, unless he wants to get even uh, clo closer to the plate and pull every outside. I would outside. move him and put I would do, I would, second I wouldn't do it with Dozier. I do it with Plouffe, but not Dozier. I was told though they got pitchers that are even mentioning their pitch count in the dugout and the nights they're pitching. Like, oh, I'm getting up there. <laughs> not no. a good sign. No, no. Take a break. Come back. The Sports Show is brought to you in part by Cambria, makers of quality quartz surfaces. Ticket King, for the best price on tickets anywhere, try Ticket King. RSM, this is the power of being understood. This is RSM. BMW of Minnetonka, choose from 60 certified pre-owned BMWs at BMW of Minnetonka. And Bobby and Steve's Auto World. Go to bobbyandstevesautoworld.com for huge savings on everything from convenience store items to everything under the hood of your car. makes it easier for kids to start smoking and harder to quit. Almost half of Minnesota teen smokers smoke menthol. Learn more at stillaproblem.com. Get started in a senior caregiving career. In only 20 weeks, Summit Academy will train you as a senior care CNA and CHW and help you find a job. No cost to you and no loans to pay back. Call 612-377-0150 or Google Summit Academy. We brought primetime crime to daytime. Then we reopened cold cases and exposed criminals. And now we've been nominated for an Emmy for Outstanding Special Class Series. Crime Watch Daily. Tomorrow at 2 on CW23.
An odometer under 15,000 miles and an up to five year 75,000 mile warranty makes it elite. The way it does this makes it a BMW. Introducing BMW Certified Pre-Owned Elite. Choose from 60 certified pre-owned BMWs at BMW of Minnetonka. Looking for a nice, big, juicy rack of ribs, fabulous chops, huge steaks, and the buddy bowl? Then J.D. Hoyt's is the place for you. Hoyt's opened in 1983, and Mike Andrews and his partner John White have kept this Minnesota tradition at the top of the food chain. Managing owner Pat Montague gives us a tour. At J.D. Hoyt's, enjoy a relaxed atmosphere, great food, friendly service, private dining room, second to none happy hour just blocks from the new ballpark. Located at 394 in North Washington, locally owned, nationally known, Hoyt's. Coming downtown, J.D. Hoyt's is the place to stop. Supper club, chop steak, seafood, say hi to Pat and the gang and have a great time. J.D. Hoyt's. Oh, boy, I just had a chicken sandwich over there the other day. It was outstanding. The Gophers. The Gophers had their tour this week. I was out in Hutchinson and in Painesville as they made the, I, I guess the, the Hutchinson one was the athletic director and Painesville was the football coaches. But uh, Mark Coyle takes over to a firestorm uh, to an extent. What do you think he's going to be able to do? What will his first moves be? The, the, lawyer, new, the new, the athle lawyer, the new athletic I director. to Joe, uh, what's his last name? Friedberg. Huh? Friedberg. Joe Friedberg thinks the thing will be nothing. He says no prosecutor will prosecute anybody except the guys who sold the drugs, and they'll get them a minor deal. And I talked to two other lawyers, too, who we do some business with. They just think the university has made a big, big thing out of this thing, much bigger than it is. Well, in fairness, the university did not make a big thing out of this. And it, it, the, the wrestler went to... The disgruntled wrestler. The Star Tribune and other places, and, and that's where the Star started. The university was actually trying to handle the situation internally. Whether it's a legal matter or not, uh, you know, whether anybody's going to be... Jay Robinson's not going to be prosecuted, but he's not going to save his job. No, I don't see that either. I'm just, I'm just curious here, um, how much did the university know as we go forward here? Because Jay, apparently Jay told him about some sort yeah, of problem. You know what Jay program. said is, I got a little problem here. What should we do? You know, do you think he said we got 2,500 Xanax pills floating around? I well, don't that, but that's, what, that's, what, that's the unanswered question. What did Jay tell the university? <laughs> and me, when was just, the word me, Xanax first used? Okay, let, let, let's go ahead. Because I've been, I know more than I can say, but the, the Xanax part of it, they, so he said test the kids for drugs, so they did. Right. They don't test them for Xanax. No. So nobody shows up, and, and a lot of people believe that Jay, old school, d he just thought he had some kids that had issues, and right. therefore he didn't, he didn't know the difference between Xanax and pot and anything else. And you and I both know more than we can let on yeah. here. And so I, we, that's totally the case here. Here's the thing. It depends if Beth gets and Mark Ryan says... Jay Robinson came to us, and he's telling the truth. He reported the thing. He told us he was gonna do, what he was gonna do. Well, the email support that he went to. Yeah. Uh, he he might get off. Did he have 1,400 Xanax pills in his possession or not? That's the question. Yeah, and where are they? And, 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 and his house was never searched. I don't know how that right. came. Yeah, that computer that, was taken. That was Here's the office. We reported office. that a long time yeah. ago. Yeah, the computer in his office was confiscated. Nothing's happened to his house. And, and, and when they bring that computer out and they look at it all, I think that what they'll maybe find is that Jay tried to take control of the situation with these guys with a, a form that he was going to make them fill out. And that's where, you know. Now, how about Mark Coyle? How, what do you think he's got to do to attack the University of Minnesota beyond this? He won't make this a decision. The president will make this decision. But I'm decision. saying in general, if you're Mark Coyle and you're sitting there and you're going, here's my priorities beyond the rest of it, what would you do? He's got a tough job. He's got a basketball coach who is a joke. Oh. And uh, he's got... Uh, Boy, have you uh, gone one He's got a young wrestling young. problem. Well, we know who didn't want to go on his show this morning. <laughs> 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 well, if he didn't, it's the only show why. he hasn't been on. <laughs> wonder why... They've never been able to hire anybody real good until this guy 
For which position now? Huh? For what position? Athletic director. Oh, uh, <laughs> or for football coach. Jerry Kill was a last minute deal. Joe Maturi the was a last minute deal. Okay, but th that's not what I'm talking about. What would you do if you're Mark Coyle right, right in the first two months of the What I'd, would you focus I'd on? I'd say, uh, I, I don't see, you know, to me, their biggest problem is Patino, you know, because it's basketball. But all of a sudden, he's Mr. Personality. He's uh, you can't, he's pit, tweeting out pictures of his daughter with uh, Muhammad Ali and everything else. He's, he's Mr. Nice Guy now. But uh, it's also going to be really interesting. Even if Reggie Lynch isn't charged with the Baylor situation and the whole attention on uh, that stuff, it's, it's going to be real interesting what he ends up with. But... You know, I don't see the crisis that everybody else does. Wrestling is a pain in the butt. Yes. And but and it's not big in the overall scheme. No matter bas how you look basketball's at it. a pain in the butt right now, but everything else is pretty good. I mean, why are we worried about football? He's Let's see if the guy can win some games or not. He's got to do what uh, athletic directors do, which is connect with the boosters, tell them that we're going to get this fixed, and 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 build support. Here's the untold, not secret, but right. fundraising is a big problem there because they can't raise any money. But the untold secret is. It's not a secret, but they're, they're getting so much money coming in. Oh, yeah. So much more than every other conference that it doesn't matter that much. No. I mean, the financial part of it, the fact that they're not selling tickets. That's right. Right now, the Big Ten's on the verge of signing some new contract that's going to give them oh, they, a lot more money. Jim Delaney is going to go down as one of the greatest I, figures in college sports. I would for, assume that Jay Robinson probably has to go. Well, they'll probably negotiate a settlement. Huh? Go ahead. As long as he can keep his camps, he'll be fine. <laughs> and actually, that's a big issue because his camp is on camp. His camp is supposed to be on camp. Well, that's the, that's the card they played. They, they said, okay, it. you can't be on campus, so right. now that moves you closer to a settlement, right? Because exactly. you say, if you if you want to be on campus, then... Yeah. Oh, by the way here, uh, since all this money's flowing in, they have no problems in paying Petito's buyout if they want to after next year. Uh, not well, talk there's about a lot of, uh, this is, again, a legal question. There's a lot of conversation about how you could approach just cause with him the program sucks but if, if your players get in trouble you go after him knowing you can't win it and then you get, offer him a deal you say okay uh you, you're not going to take the buyout we offered so therefore uh w if we fire you with cause then we're going to go after you so we try getting a job somewhere else in the country or we can negotiate something smaller if the, if, it, if this goes that way sounds Here, reasonable here's the thing chip compared this with baylor I don't agree with him no, at all. No, he didn't. I don't think. I don't think that's what he said. That was a different situation altogether than this situation. But uh, I don't know what he, like, like you guys said, every they're four in that fourth in that Lear deal. The Learfield Cup. The Cup deal. Wrestling's a problem. Basketball's a problem. They gotta find a way to solve those two. Okay, take a break, come back, you're watching the sports show. Hey guys. Hey mom. Keep the change, Frank. Same time next week. When it drives and looks like new, you'll wanna treat it like new. Certified pre-owned by BMW. Choose from 60 certified pre-owned BMWs at BMW of Minnetonka. You're watching CW23. Welcome back to the sports show. Muhammad Ali, the passing of. Usually we just focus on uh, local sports here, but of course this is a national sport that, uh, national story that transforms everything. Patrick, uh, you were more akin in that uh, you grew up with him, kind of. Yeah, I had never, uh, however, Sid and I, I think, met him formally for the first time. And when Harvey McKay brought yep. him in for the book signing in 1997, yep. and we got to spend some time up in the... Uh, that was 97 suite, already, 1997, yeah. 1997, spent the suite with him. He was still pretty sharp. He had the Parkinson's, but he had the one-liners, and he was... Um, he was. In, I, I just kind of sat there and watched Hondo do his magic and Muhammad <laughs> look at him like... <laughs> Hondo was doing his magic then, too, oh, huh? Hondo did his magic for him for okay, five so, hours so, that day. Let me ask a question to someone that was just too young to really appreciate what Muhammad Ali did at that time. Uh, so I understand he was a uh, conscientious objector to the war. A lot of people say this is their hero, this is one of the greatest people. I, I've never been able to come to terms with all of it because 
being a conscientious objector and and I stand up for what you believe in religion, I, I get all that. But he also had nine kids, and yeah. I, I didn't quite get. It was a personality. He was a charming yeah. personality, and he, you know, he was he was in the civil rights movement. But here's the deal: I'm in that generation, and uh, you know, I'm 70 years old. We did not have the resentments toward Muhammad for not going into the draft that everybody else did, because none of us want, you know. I had friends. I've been to the wall. It's yep. it's it's very yeah. emotional. I have too. But uh, you know, no thank you. We were all trying to figure out a way not to get drafted. Then, and he so. kind of became the spokesman for everybody. Well, no, no, but I'm, I'm just saying right. there wasn't the resentment towards no, no him, mad at him from the generation of, of contemporaries. Of my age. Yep. Yeah. You know, I started watching Ali when I was a little kid. And the Ali I knew as a kid was a guy who would shuffle his feet and have the fast hands, and he was. He was a braggadocious, he was confident, he was cocky, and he was super entertaining. I mean, I was just glued to the TV just to listen to him talk and his interviews with Harco Cell. It wasn't as, until I got older that I understood the enormity of what he was. And for him to uh, come out and say, I'm not going to go to Vietnam and bomb, and bomb the Viet Cong when there's a war here with my people not getting equality in this country was uh, something I didn't realize until I, as I got older. And I ended up appreciating him for what he stood for even more. Sydney. Muhammad Ali. Close personal friend, right? Oh, well, like Prince, I'm sure it's getting in that no, same category. No. He was such a character that the military thing kind of over, overcame that. Yep. It was nothing was, to overcome. And he was so good as a boxer. I mean, in those days, boxing is a dead issue right now. Yeah. You used to have every Friday night, you had a big fight. You had, I went to one fight in New York. Madison Square Garden with Dick Cullum. I mean, it was the biggest thing in the world. Did you ever see Ali fight? Huh? Did you ever see Ali fight? No, Live. I didn't see him fight, but I, I went up with him. With, I forgot what it I think it was a Fraser fight. Yeah. And boxing at that time was so big. Well, that's the other part that it's hard to have an appreciation Although, from some generation. it was, the, you know, it was not like it was in the 50s and 60s, but it was, but... But if you want to know why he's so popular, see the documentary When We Were Kings that was made in 1974, but wasn't really, the film was made from the fight in Zaire. That's, if you, if you want to, you know, it's a fantastic documentary and it just tells you how he, people embrace him. You know. Remember back in the day, that's when remember he used to fight like six, seven times a year, and now we can't get guys to fight once every eighteen. No, I months. was looking up the '76 <laughs> thing when he fought the Japanese guy in the wrestling boxing match. He'd already had four fights, uh, three fights that year before. You know, <laughs> he'd had like three fights in four months that year. You, you know, I got to tell you something else that's amazing to me though is his Parkinson's and and you know Scott Ledoux ALS. There's a lot of fighters that, are, and some don't. And I wonder how you could take that many punches. And some guys, like George Foreman, I was listening to, he sounds fine. Yeah, some of them can. It doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. But, but let me say this: uh, as a kid who grew up in the you know 50s and 60s, the idea that someday in Atlanta, Georgia, in the mid 90s, a guy who was what we call a black Muslim. And a conscientious objector would light the Olympic torch, and we'd all cry with emotion. Mm -hmm. Tells us that we've come a ways, even if people don't want to admit it. You know? more we got a black president, by the way. We've yeah. come a ways. Yes. Yes. You know, Sid. Now you know what I'll go. The guy was show such now. a character. <laughs> 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 Let's just take a break on that one. Okay. Come back after this. Stay with us. The sports show is brought to you in part by Case Law for all your legal needs, not your typical law firm. Griffin Bail Bonds. It's better to know us and not need us than to need us and not know us. And Edge Marketing and Promotional Products. From t-shirts to swag, featuring over 100,000 products. We can put your logo on anything. If you guys could go on a free shopping spree anywhere, where would you go? I'd go to the grocery store. Pizza, ice cream. I'd go shop for clothes. You know where I go? I go to Ticket King. Ticket King! At Ticket King, you can buy great seats for the Vikings, the Wild, the Timberwolves, and of course, the Twins. We, we love the Twins! Yep, this is where I go. Vikings, Twins, Wild, Timberwolves, Gophers, Theater, and Concerts, too. For details, go to TicketKingOnline.com. 
any ticket, anytime, anywhere. It's the real thing. It's Ticket King. Right, Dad? Couldn't have said it any better myself. That's, That's for right. sure. Every step without hesitation. Anticipate your next move with certainty. Because our trusted advisors help you prepare for challenges specific to your business. Our focus is always on you, so your focus is always forward. Experience the power of being understood. RSM, Audit, Tax and Consulting for the Middle Market. You're watching CW23. Welcome back to the sports show, the Minnesota Vikings mini camp this week. I don't know that I've seen you this optimistic in some time. <laughs> well, last night they had a 60th birthday for, for Mr. Zimmer. Boy, everybody in town was there. Not me. And Not me. Uh, uh, for a guy who's been here three years, he's pretty popular, I'll tell you that. I couldn't believe the, the attendance there. Uh, he's very optimistic about this uh, team. Uh, he thinks the offensive line will be a big battle. They will take uh, Berger this week, and they will try him at another position. Besides center. center yep. They think there's been no contact, but he thinks that Sullivan looked better than ever right now. And he thinks Sullivan make a big difference. How does he know Sullivan's looked better than ever? He's only been here two years. Everybody how does he know how Sullivan looked four years ago? Everybody looks good during the off season. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the I think they are the gonna be good. I think they are gonna be good, but it should be they're healthy. Well it should be a yeah. heck of a defense. I just, as I said, I'm just glad I don't have to go out to OTAs and talk to somebody and pretend like I wrote a column about it. We're covering that harder than ever now. Hey, everybody yeah. does, though. It is because it's the time of the year, too. Especially if a baseball when team's out of town, when you get a baseball, bad baseball team. Especially when your baseball team is eight and a half games yeah. out of 14th place. I'm That's worried. what I mean. <laughs> That's why I'm not happy about this. They're OTAs moving. look pretty good some days, guys. Yes. They're moving down the street from my house. I'm not happy about this. Another feature <laughs> on that, that German wide receiver seems pretty good some days. <laughs> I don't know. I think the Twins got a better German than they do. I'm not sure. You like Kepler? Yeah. No. Nah. The poor Vikings wouldn't even let the Twins have the German angle. They had to <laughs> steal that. Sid, finish it up, buddy. You got to mention the links. They're the only winning team in town <laughs> consistently. Okay. Never lost. All those Look at it, and like Muhammad Ali, nobody thought they'd see a, 19, the a 1996. Yeah. We never thought we'd see Muhammad Ali. My brother bet a guy a case of beer. The guy bet that the oh, Lynx would have 20 wins Sid before the Twins. <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody. The Sports Show is brought to you in part by Cambria, makers of quality quartz surfaces. Ticket King. For the best price on tickets anywhere, try Ticket King. RSM. This is the power of being understood. This is RSM. BMW of Minnetonka. Choose from 60 certified pre-owned BMWs at BMW of Minnetonka. And Bobby and Steve's Auto World. Go to BobbyandSteve'sAutoWorld.com for huge savings on everything from convenience store items to everything under the hood of your car.